Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I am Rex. It's, uh, you I'm never, Daniel. Yes, thank I'm Daniel. You. I was about to say, you never say your Daniel. I never say my name. You go back and watch the videos, it's always me going, I'm Rex, and then and you I, start talking. Yeah, okay. Like, he's really excited about his name. I'm Daniel. <laughs> and, uh, I'm feeling a little fragile, but we're doing gift whiskeys this week. He's about to give birth. I am about to give birth. Personally. Yeah. About to give birth. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> kidney gonna, stones. Just gonna leave that there. No kidney stones. Oh, I've got kidney you left stones. it. I picked it up. Kidney stones. Yeah. If you hear screaming in a moment, yeah, I almost yeah. passed out this weekend. <laughs> okay, let's drink whiskey. All right, this review, Devil's Rye whiskey, Seven Devil's Rye whiskey. Who's this dedicated to? Dedicated Dang. to the glorious bastard, generous fellow, Nick Johnston. I've heard things. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard things. Word is spreading. Smart and attractive. Yeah, that's right. Generosity is just the least. Wise beyond his years. The least of his virtues. Yet and here's the thing. Generous. Since he gave us two, I say we crack our own. Ready? Yeah. Ah. Yes. Bottoms up. All right. I feel like I'm on an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is a significant pour. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I shouldn't have done that. And somehow mine end up being more than yours. Okay, so... No, it didn't. That's not possible. Okay, <laughs> the so... The universe uh, it. Yeah. Uh, mm, Nick light. says, thanks for the, you know, show. You guys are great. Found you through Modern Rogue. Hell yeah. He says, what's the background on why Scotch and Irish whiskeys use gift boxes? Marketing. That's it. <laughs> that's the end of that one. Marketing. That's it's all. kind of anti um, And he included a rye he thought we should have. It's similarly priced. Uh... To bullet. Okay. So bullet rye? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I remember liking bullet rye because I got eucalyptus from that, which I don't often get. This smells Wow, this is much I'm not, prettier. I'm not getting um, the black licorice anise note that I often get. Now this uh, the master distiller is the Koenig, and I'm I'm uh, I would pronounce it Koenig because we have some major donors on campus who spell their name C O E N I G. Yeah. And they they pronounce their last name. Well, there's Koenig. a street here in Austin called Koenig too. Yeah. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, that's because my bad. Koenig. But Andrew Koenig and I think he had a brother, but on the website it's not mentioning him anymore. Uh, they are doing this 95% rye, 5% barley. They are sourcing the rye from an undisclosed Kentucky distillery, having it shipped to Idaho, aging it for four years. And then um, bottling it. Aging the whiskey. The, the whiskey. Okay. And they're cutting it with Idaho snow melt water. Just on the nose, mm -hmm. if you didn't know this was a rye, would you be getting Irish whiskey? Yeah, I totally would be getting Irish whiskey. Now, it's kind of high proof <laughs> smelling. Yeah. Let's see, what is the proof? No, it's not high. It's only 42. It smells really rubbing alcoholish. Sweet. But it's also kind of biscuity. So a sweet, creamy note combined with vanilla, a little spicy. I tried the taste. It's sweet and creamy. I don't, I don't get rye from this. I'm not getting rye from this. I'm not, even though the label says Yeah, otherwise. me either. I am not That convinced. is so smooth. It is. It's so smooth. Well, That's like a vanilla cream whiskey. Sweet, creamy, some vanilla, and definitely there's alcohol in there. Man, this may be one of the most interesting and friendly ryes I've ever tasted it's in my entire life. It's incredibly life. friendly. No black pepper. No. What's, what's, what's interesting to me, though, is how definitely I'm getting alcohol in here. Oh, yeah. But I'm having that cream note stand up to it. And what's weird is the alcohol is high, even though it's barely. I mean, it's right on the edge of Legally Whiskey with four, almost 40. Okay. Usually when you get this high proof, you're at least 46 to 50. Yeah, I would have... Now that's tasty. As sweet and creamy and friendly and vanilla y as this is, not complicated. It's got some burn. No, it's not complicated. No. It's very kind of one note. It's like ice cream. Ice cream. Yes. Like you put some liquor and some ice cream. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna see what the bullet rye compares to it. We always compare everything to the bullet rye. Should we compare it to some other rye? Um, we, well, we, we did compare it to, We did Russell's Reserve that I like. Well, the reason I compare it to Bullet because because Bullet's forty five, so right. that's pretty close in proofing. Right. While you do that, uh, David Foreman, any visits to Scotland planned? So yes, Rex and I are going to go to Scotland for and roam around the stories for research purposes and science and science. I've just got to figure out how to explain to my wife that it's a business trip. I just did. 
and uh, that research, she can't come. Research and science. <laughs> because it's just a research business trip. And science. Yeah. Which is different than research. Although she could come if, if uh, Brandy goes and they go do their own thing. <laughs> we'll see you in ten days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although we we'll, wouldn't. We'll, we'll catch up with you each evening, and that's it. <laughs> we... Either we shoot some vault episodes from Scotland, which could be cool. Oh, that would be really cool. What's the broadband situation in Scotland? Because if we can't upload to Chad, that would be a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. I don't know. Yeah, what's the broad... I like that you just asked, what is the internet situation in an entire country? No, like... That is totally Western. No, some... <laughs> no, yes, but some of them are, like, really pretty remote. Yeah, no, that's true. So it depends yeah. on which town we're in. Yeah, there could be just dial-up issues. So, for me, this would be a really interesting, and I say the word rye loosely, because this is a very... You know what? Coming back to Bullet? This is a very unique rye for me. This would be it's very creamier than I remember. Bullet? Yes! What is up with our palate today? I don't know. It's the time of day. It's something we ate. All this rye whiskey is tasting creamy. No. This is exactly what I remember. Bullet yeah. rye being. Yeah. It definitely has the eucalyptus always comes back. Eucalyptus. I'm getting a little bit more cinnamon than I remember. The oil. The tea oil. Yeah. Kind of vibe. This has none of the cinnamon, none of the herbal notes, none of the barrel. Actually, if, if, I can't even tell what barrel this was in. If you adore rye, like that black licorice. Yeah, you're probably not going to like this. This is not your scene. But if you're like us and you don't really like rye all that much, mm. I kind of dig this. That's a little bit too blan this is blanket of a statement that I'm comfortable with. Because okay. I found at least two ryes. Okay, that you that actually kind of dig. damn good. Well, I, uh, I'd i like to try this with ice as a dessert drink. Yeah. I'll bet it would be beautiful. If only somebody had access to ice in the building. Yeah, I'm not going down there. I'll read comments if you go down there. While you're gone. Charlie G. Haig. I whis can't run right now. I'm The fragile. whiskey saint. I think I called him the priest last time. He's the saint. The yes. Pa the patron saint of The patron whiskey. saint of whiskey. I've been wondering, are there any Scotch distilleries that make bourbon? There are dozens of North American distilleries making single malts, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard of a bourbon outside the U.S. Uh, doing such a thing. Uh, I'd love to try one if there is. If not, someone should really get on that. Yeah. So, no. Not that I know of. But keep in mind, and I told this to Charlie, and then I didn't respond to the thing that he said, but Charlie, here's the thing. A lot of grain whiskey, even though legally to be called grain single malts or single grain scotch or grain scotch whiskey, it still has to have malted barley in it, yes. But a lot of grain whiskey in Scotland is just corn and wheat. Which means you could very easily end up with a grain whiskey in Scotland that has enough corn percentage to be technically a bourbon based product or like a bourbon grain mash um, but then they would have to age it in new oak did which you, they're never going to do did you and i may be misremembering this did you tell me something interesting last week which was if moonshine touches wood it's bourbon it's bourbon yes so if you get moonshine pour it over it's a, corn whiskey pour it over a plank of wood yeah and technically if it's a new oak yeah, well, okay, so if you read the rules for bourbon, it requires that it be aged in new oak. But nowhere does it say exactly how long. Now, there are requirements for calling it straight, and you have to say how old it is, or bottled and bond. There's always requirements for the other stuff. But to just say bourbon, technically, and no one that I know has done this, <laughs> you could just pour it into a new oak bucket. And then pour it into a bottle. And then carry it across the room. <laughs> <laughs> and then pour it into a bottle, and you can label that. If you said this is a uh, sixty-second, right? Bourbon, we, should, we should do that in your distillery. This it, is it's called sixty-second bourbon. It's called technically bourbon. Yeah, it's technically <laughs> bourbon. Aged in New Oak for uh, ninety-five seconds. <laughs> uh, so briefly re revisiting the Seven Devils Rye. Um, I generally prefer things a bit more complex than this. This is kind of sweet one note, but if you're really into like the vanilla cream notes, um, you don't want something very complicated. This could be a really good in cocktails, I think. It'd mm -hmm. be really nice in cocktails. Oh yeah, it's not gonna absolutely. Be a, it's not going to be a go-to whiskey for me, but I can see I'm still getting a lot of alcohol in the nose from it. I am too. I can see a lot of people digging this, digging the just the very few notes that it does. Produce. I'm gonna even though it's already a low proof, I'm gonna add a little more water and see what happens. Uh, Luis Desroches. Desroches. Sure. Desroches. Desroches. Luis Desroches. A question that has puzzled me for a bit. A number of Scotch whiskeys are aged 
in used bourbon barrels. But mm -hmm. bourbon is relatively newer spirit historically than Scotch whiskey. So right. what did Scottish distilleries use before there was a great supply of used bourbon barrels? And that must mean that today's Scotch whiskeys are different in character from their historical versions from 100 plus years ago. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, so I would say, first is barrels date back, as far as we can tell, like 3000 BC. People were already using barrels to transport things. Uh, not like the barrels we have now, but even Pliny the Elder, uh, BC, Pliny the Elder, talked about be careful what kind of wood you use to store things because... Tripe barrels. So, like, yun no. barrel could poison you, you know? So, things like that. So, um, people were using barrels to transport liquids for a long damn time before we have written records of whiskey being made. So, usually whiskey was uh, carried around in, in uh, jars for house use, mm -hmm. but you travel with that over the highlands of wagons, they would break, or you put it on boats, it break, you end up with a lot of loss. So they started putting it in barrels. Well, no one knows what barrel, first they just chose barrels they had. So sometimes it was a fish barrel, sometimes it was a wine barrel, and then like, hey, the wine barrel one is uh, a lot better than the fish barrel one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do more wine barrels. Yeah. I mean, it was just a thing. So eventually, see, winemakers were using uh, barrels to age wine. I mean, wait, the Romans were doing it, like way back, right? So, um, and even before then, the Greeks were doing it. So, traditionally, before bourbon, if you aged whiskey in a barrel, odds are it was a wine barrel. Mm. Period. Um, and odds are it didn't stay in the barrel for very long. Uh, usually it was just long enough to either transport it, and then put it in, and, and then give it to the merchants, and then the merchants would either bottle it, or they would actually just sell it from the bar. So if you went and ordered a whiskey, they'd just pour your whiskey into a glass from the barrel. Mm -hmm. And what happened was as that barrel sat there, the whiskey got darker and darker and better and better. And so eventually it became a, a thing where you intentionally kept it in barrels. And then the reason they had a three-year rule was actually the people trying to stop drinking. They were trying to keep people from, it was the prohibitionist movement oh. that was involved in instituting the three-year rule before you could call something scotch yeah. to try to keep people from releasing products, make them wait for and three years. And they only made it more delicious. Yeah, and then what <laughs> happened is it became the industry standard. <laughs> <laughs> well done, you. Yeah, and now they're all like, we age at least three years because only a fool would age less than that. It's like, well, why? Well... Because a couple hundred years ago, they made us. <laughs> was it, a, it, was like a, it was like a hundred years ago, wasn't it? It was at least a hundred years ago. It was, uh, yeah. yeah okay. So, um, at this point, we have had some amazing toasty candidates for yes. a part toast. Some are fantastic. Very good ones. Uh, we recently got one in from uh, Jason Fisk. Mm -hmm. And we let him do it on video. You saw it. He, he did it on video. Yep. I really like that toast. Me too. I think... We just need to make it gender neutral. So here's the thing. Uh, we are very aware of the handful of ladies that we have watching this. There's <laughs> some women watching this channel that could wipe the floor with the vast majority of guys in terms of being able to pick out uh, the, the notes yeah, and the flavors. Yeah, what they're doing. Just, yes. Let's so, just say if you're a lady and you're watching our show, the odds are you're in the top 10% of people who know what they're doing <laughs> on our channel. You have to be that serious about yeah. whiskey. <laughs> be hanging out on our prob they probably know more than us. Yeah, well, I, and I don't want to overtly make it a boys club. So we're going to take that toast from Jason Fisk, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, we're going to modify it ever so, ever so slightly. We're going to be doing a three-part toast. Yes, I love it. Yes. Awesome. Lovely. Okay. And then I have an idea for... Uh, a, a, a neat little trick for you guys to be getting your preferred whiskeys higher up on the list of whiskeys that are, we're going to be reviewing. I'll tell you about it. And all right. I'll all tell right. you about it. It'll be News good. to me. Yeah. All right. He doesn't know. I don't I'm know. in charge of this channel. I don't know. I've taken control, <laughs> yeah, finally. He really has. <laughs> um, and there was one last thing. Oh! Oh! Uh, we only have very few seats left in the... Video class, we got like three seats left. Yeah, so, uh, how to build an audience with video, upper right corner, um, you can watch something, I don't know. If you are in business or an entrepreneur, yeah. you probably want to be here. Come join us. Anyways. Alright. Another toast from somebody that's very toasty. Cheers. Cheers. Boys, up your butt sideways. It's laundromat. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.